the live. Well, welcome to Hairdressing Live. This is the future of education. And this section has just been developed into Ask the Hairdresser section. So today we have a very good friend of mine, John Ma from Queen Salon, um, also Queen Sa uh, Q Salons as well. But um, let me introduce John. John has been a friend of mine and uh, a, a leader in the industry for many, many years now. Um, myself and John go back from, uh, we used to be to have franchises within Tony and Guy. And I've always arranged chats with John and kept in touch and we regular meet up. He offers me so much advice and vice versa, I hope, but we always have great conversations. Maybe I get more out of John than he gets out of me type of thing. But uh, we always regularly meet up and it's always nice to chat. And that's why I wanted to film this conversation because we have a topic which always, always crops up between salon owners and assistants and, and training in general. So um, today we have John Ma. Welcome, John. Thanks, Paul. Pleasure to be here. Uh, very good, and thank you very much. We, we, we've just been chatting beforehand, and what we want to do is create like a very informal conversation. Um, so myself and John are going to, just going to go back and forward about um, different topics, but mainly concentrating on education. Obviously, Hairdressing Live is education-based, but I mean, we just want to delve into a little bit deeper into you know, more assistance training, and the mindset behind a sort of very positive and successful career of assistants or even stylists as well because it relates to both anyway but before we go into that um john tell me a little bit about what you have been doing because you've been in business now for i mean how long is that 10 years with um queen is it 10 uh, years? yeah um, well coming up to 30 years in the industry uh, queen is uh, the ripe old age of 10 uh, next month years. yeah so that's that's been great we opened just in time for everything to go off a cliff <laughs> <laughs> in 2007 so yeah. uh, it's been a real barrel of laughs negotiating that roller coaster but I, I mean it's interesting and, and i know we're going to we we'll touch on it it is uh, the the rolling and the uh, adjusting to the conditions uh, that I found myself in that has kind of created the identity of the brand and, and moved into Q Salon and the opportunities that came from the challenging times and I you know I, I mean I know we're not alone when we refer to that because everybody's been through uh, the same challenges and uh, opportunities of course which you must also factor into <laughs> this <laughs> that we both have. So yeah, I guess I, I'm I'm really pleased that we we are where we are today, and, that and we're still here. And yeah. we're still here, we're still in the, the good industry. fight, fight the good fight. Yeah, it's good great. Indeed. Look, you you opened up the salon um, with with a great ethos. I mean, and it's evolved into you. We were just chatting there a minute ago about Q salons. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the concept behind Q salons. I mean, it's like a different sort of. Yeah. different avenue really isn't it's it? a different avenue and it came out i guess of a res uh, as a response to uh, the downturn and, and i remember having some serious conversations with everyone in in 2008 about you know needing to bang down the hashes and look at where we are and uh, we're in for a little bit of a rough ride and uh, so i'm fortunate enough to be from the great county of tipperary <laughs> and it's, so when i started out uh, a long time ago my first uh, ever business was was there um, and you know my my uh, family had uh, obviously big connections with the place so um, my first ever business was there and then an opportunity came along to go back there again in 2009 and I thought you know a plan B given everything that was in the ether at that time was was a, was a good one um, so we went down there and I knew that I was going to do something that had a different uh, I guess uh, setup cost you know because setting up uh, Queen in the city centre in, in, in 2007, um, we certainly threw the kitchen sink at it from a, you know, from a, a, a design and, 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 yeah, and, and a cost perspective. Whereas I knew I needed to do something that was um, easier to get open and therefore cost less and was gonna be on a much smaller scale. So we'll feel a different identity. So I went along and I nicked the queue out of Queen and thought, that could be my brand, so Q Salon. And I had the idea too, or the understanding, I guess, that the market uh, would perhaps bear something that wasn't necessarily at the same price level as Queen, and um, uh, finding a way to identify that was kind of where Q Salon came, up, came about. So looking at um, being outside of Dublin or certainly outside of the city centre, uh, 
evolving the idea of Q Salon into, into something that was a little less, um, I guess, expensive to open and run as queen, so having lower, o- lower yeah. over, overheads such as rents and whatnot mm-hmm. out of the, the city centre was a great opportunity. Um, and yeah, so the first one opened ten, nine years ago, and then we opened um, our friends in the Horse and Jockey Hotel. Um, came along and they did a, a, a massive expansion project in their hotel and we felt that um, Q Salon was a good fit for there so it was great for me to be able to come along and take the expertise and the training and the skill set that uh, we already had established with the team and also I guess, the relationships that I have with suppliers and my understanding of, um, of the industry and use those skills and then do a really nice um, uh, partnership um, in the the spa and the salon, or the spa and the hotel rather. And how do you and find that relationship with the? Because that's different. I mean, I've never been involved with that. So I mean, how is that in in, in the, the, uh, in the horse and jockey with the the hotel relationship? Is it? Well, I must say the, the Egan family that run the the horse and jockey are f- fantastic people. Tom Egan, who's at the helm, is a, a brilliant man who's really. Uh, grown his business with a passion and an understanding of what it is that suits his life that I really admire and he uh, I think it's, it's visible when you, when you go there you see how this place started and it's a much smaller business and has evolved and grown and that has been strategic and I think fundamental to that is his capacity to communicate and look at opportunities and, and manage relationships and um, so I had the good fortune to, 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 um, to have grown up in that neck of the woods. So, I, so we knew each other anyhow. And it was really nice to be able to build on that relationship and look at uh, what it was that I could provide and what it was that he needed. And through several conversations, we looked at how, how it could work. And, uh, and it, it has done. We've expanded and grown. And last year, we doubled the size of the place. And it's still a neat space, but it has... Uh, maximize the potential of a space within the hotel that was mm-hmm. previously non-revenue generating. Okay. So that's a very interesting concept, and it was one. Wonder- People uh, travel to you from from uh, outside the hotel, or is it mainly hotel guests that you cater for? Is it because I don't know? Yeah. I don't know where the yeah. horse and jockey is. It's down in Tipperary. Yeah, right? so it's a four-star hotel, a very um, busy business um, and conference-based um, uh, business model there. Mm-hmm. So it's got quite a professional clientele. And people do travel there from all over. Um, I guess one of the things that we discussed from the beginning was looking at what kind of business would it be. And what my uh, understanding and my uh, knowledge of the business told me was that the idea of putting somebody alone in a salon, in a hotel, purely to serve as guests was something that I didn't think was going to be sustainable because there's a boredom threshold. And I think we've all encountered places where uh, you know, that, that somebody's left working on their own, and it's very hard to keep that fire and that passion. We do better when we communicate and we Gosh, share. Tell you know, me, we tell know me, that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I encourage Tom to take the scale of this endeavor and, and put it into something a little bit larger and grander, so that we could find something that was sustainable in itself. Look at the growth of the assistant uh, through it, and that is something that I guess that understanding was harnessed from uh, my own experience, and you know, in, in larger scale, and you know, previous. Uh, businesses that we've worked in together mm-hmm. and and we've known the industry um, tells us that when there is a career path mm-hmm. then people do better and the business does better because there's a, a loyalty and a sense of growth and opportunity that that really is fed from that sense of um, participating uh, in someone's career mm-hmm. uh, so making that um, leap and convincing uh, a guy who was used to dealing with a different kind of staffing, you know, he was, you know, more so with the, the hospitality sector, so it was perhaps not everybody was going to be public facing, and just clarifying the difference in the, the conditions and the kind of understanding of the opportunities that we need to provide for our, our staff in our industry that keeps them uh, enthused and forward looking, and therefore the business becomes something that grows with that energy also. And I think we know. Um, as, as educators that there's a currency in tapping into education which really you, you actually can't put a price on because we, we, we know that when 
people get an opportunity to express themselves and feel bigger and part of something that is just there every day. When we create an environment where there's room to grow, and there's room to praise, and there's room to change, and room to evolve yeah. and see progression, that the power of that, the reward of that is enormous. And you, the, the counter to that is when we see places where that is absent, and particularly, I guess, in, in the market uh, that we've, we've all been in, in, uh, enduring <laughs> for you know, a, a good number of years, and thankfully we seem to be coming out of that now again. In those more challenging and straightened times where people were tight on budgets and tight on time and conscious of overheads, one of the things that became diminished was the emphasis on um, ensuring that we created an environment where we did nurture our our learning, our growth, our staff, our team. And unfortunately, the saving there is very short term and ultimately it's a cost because we find down the road when things change and people move on and the fluidity of the workforce that is the hairdressing industry comes to be a factor in, in, in our everyday business. If we don't have something in place to feed that, like physical people who can do the job, but also people who are enthused and love what it is that they do, uh, if we have it invested in that, then it leaves us somewhere that is um, more difficult to navigate. So we, we create a problem for ourselves down the road, yeah. I would say. That was the short answer. <laughs> that was the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, but I mean, I, you, you mentioned there, you touched on, I mean, in my, in my opinion, it is social progression that keeps motivation alive, 100%. So we, by, by offering uh, you know, personal development in some shape or form, um, and that keeps people enthusiastic about keeping their career. And I mean, I, I do believe if that motivation goes, you could basically lose people, you know? So it's, it, it's very, very important. I mean, that's why it, what is very important for me was Hairdressing Live was to be able to offer access, or should I say access, um, education weekly or bi-weekly, um, inspirational um, topics that go on, um, that, that can keep people, you know, energized rather than trying to send them to like either Dublin or send them to Galway, send them to like London, send them to Paris on education. We wanted to bring the education to them so people can tap into inspiration weekly, monthly. And that's social progress. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that we do have. And I mean, the, the how, how education has evolved over these years is the accessibility of it, mm -hmm. you know, which is, which is the uh, most, most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, education, I mean, as we go on about education, you do have education programs in in Queen, don't you, mm -hmm. for your assistants? How regular do you do them? Do you do them weekly? Do you do them yeah, them? weekly we do, and we take time out of the working week to ensure that we deliver, we deliver that. And then we do extra programs education. in place. Yes, yeah. So we've got um, individualized programs and targets, and uh, you know, we set uh, of criteria that we, we we work on ensuring that we can get a basis <coughs> of. Um, education that is that is going to be commercial and inspiring for all our staff and also we do that in a structured uh, time frame you know so that we can ensure that we are making progress and that we have an understanding as to where we should be and if we're not there why is that we can ask those questions when they need to, need to be asked um, so yeah it is a fundamental part of what we do and again it just ties into that kind of earlier spiel that I had <laughs> going on yeah. with, that we that we agree upon but I think you know it's really wonderful to see um, you know hairdressing live delivering something that is really very important in this digital age in that we are not just in in our industry but you know our, our world is now full of information and the question is, how do we collate that information? How do we choose the information that we respect? And if we look at our TV now, you know, TV has, has changed enormously. And there's so many things that you can look up that are no longer really a, 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 a traditional channel or something that we would be familiar with. Um, and I think what you hit on here with Hairdressing Live, which is a really brilliant opportunity, is an editorial comment, an editorial um, process whereby you can stand over the quality of the um, participants and endorse something that is a really quali you know, quality product in what is a very large and um, unregulated market. 
Um, and I think hairdressing live has got a, a really wonderful opportunity there. And I really, I, I, I just love your idea. I just think it's really great. I think it's genius. And thank you very much for being <laughs> the industry, Paul. If I'm going to say that. That ain't too smarmy. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Is that just you know? smarmy enough for Jim? <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, okay. no. I'm okay with smarmy <laughs> But look, I mean, I suppose back onto the topic, because what we want to do for um, our viewers here is actually create topics. And guys, you know what? At home, yourself, if there's things that you would like us to cover, please message in because it's very important for us to cover topics that people want to, you know, uh, uh, some advice on or if, it, if it's something, you know, within clients, whether it's um, topics, whether it's finance, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, education, anything that you want, we can get to cover. So one of the main topics that we wanted to cover today was assistant education. We have been talking about it previously, but how to achieve a, 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 a positive or a, a, shall we say a continued motivational mindset within the industry. Now, I mean, I, I was talking to John about this and, you know, I mean, jo John's got his own views on it as well, but my view uh, as well, I mean, I was just talking to my staff there the other week and you know what, when you get given classes and you get given that time um, every single week, whether it's um, two hours, whether it's four hours, um, make sure that you always have models in. I mean, to be perfectly frank with you, when you've got an educator taking time out of their day, or you know, whether it's the evening time, or, or you, you capture that um, educational time, make sure you take advantage of that. Because be honest, let's be honest here. I mean, everybody that's in this industry are very, very busy. You're very busy, I'm very busy, and everybody's very, very busy. And the only person that cares more about your education is yourself, right? It is, realistically, it's yourself, and you've got to take stock of what you do whether it's um if you've got to learn like a one length haircut or you've got to learn a square layer or a box layer or whatever they you know different terminologies and different education institutions um make sure that you have those and i i'll be honest with you hairdressing is about experience i mean what we offer is topics but i expect people to go and practice that afterwards because Constant repetition leads to, you know, uh, perfecting something. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think it's. I think that's it, all of that. It's, I absolutely agree with one hundred percent. And I, I, I was reflecting a little bit uh, on on that because I, I know we we talked previously about um, attaining good education, okay. looking at the the industry. And when we look at the notion of education and the industry, we look at there's two elements. There's the person being educated and there's the person who is delivering that education. Mm -hmm. And I guess for from our perspective as business owners, we need to look at that in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So looking at creating a learning-based environment rather than a teaching-based environment, which was something that we were very passionate about at yeah, Queen. Yeah. And it's a simple guideline which informs the choices that we make when we're providing education. Okay. And as someone who's providing education, I need to take responsibility to ensure that the environment that everybody is participating in is one that best lends itself to the best possible outcome. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I would take responsibility also in ensuring that I'm supporting, I'm connected, I'm listening, and I am finding a way to ensure a degree of flexibility and understanding around the process that and, and, and you and a younger member of the team is, is uh, or it's somebody else's team from, uh, from outside perhaps, uh, is participating in. So again, creating that uh, really worthwhile environment where everybody benefits. Going from learning to, uh, from teaching to learning realistically. Yeah, that, that, okay, you know, yeah, and you the, like we need, to, we need to value that. Yeah, and yeah. the complexity of that is a two-way thing. Yeah. So it's not about identifying just the requirements or the obligations of the person who's receiving the learning, because mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity for them, and their uh, opportunity there is to, to grow themselves and grow their uh, chances to find something that's you know really rewarding and, and move on with their lives and their, their career and, um, and make the best of all of that. But from an industry perspective, when we step back and look at how that that learning and that education, this resource that we're creating in this new fired up, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, uh, member of our team. When we look as business owners uh, about what it is that we're creating there, uh, I need to understand how do I work in a way that is best suited to allowing that person to develop really well, and what are the responsibilities 
uh, that I have to take on it to ensure that I create an environment that is best suited to that person allowing themselves to give themselves a leg up also so it's it's yeah. both sides of the coin it is it is a two-way street then two-way street I mean look I mean the whenever whenever people I mean when I, I've got to say that two-way street also applies to when when people are um, you know if you want to go on in, in your career and you get to a certain level um, in, in your career, I mean, and you offer education, like what we're saying, but I'm talking about salons at home, um, in, in, all around Ireland, all around the UK, where salons, if they don't have education, can I just say, um, I would actually get a book, I would get an education book and offer um, a, 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 like a formula, almost like a management, If how, how do you manage progress? You know, you've got to monitor it, right? So you've got to monitor, monitor people's progression, right? Yeah. So if you're going to offer education in your salon, which is, is, everybody has to do that. Everybody has to do it, in my opinion. And if you don't do it, you know, and monitor it. So you've got to monitor it in such a way that people, like if, if, you, if it's five haircuts or if it's 10 haircuts, or if it's five colors, it's five, you know, 10 colors. You've got to monitor those. So you have to have strategic plan in place. You have a question? You have a question? When you're finished. Okay. You carry on. Okay, well, thank you very much Sorry. for butting in there. <laughs> Subtle, Brian. Subtle. Uh, but as I was saying, if you don't have um, like a, an education plan in place, um, get one in place because I, I think it's very, very crucial to monitor each person's uh, progression within that. But I mean, even, even you know, g going into people's or delving into people's careers a little bit more um, intuitive here because what you need to do I mean even that mindset talking about that mindset of people that when opportunities come up you know they should take them and I mean I I, I, I don't care I mean you know you, you ask the most successful hairdressers in on, on this planet or even successful people in their careers it doesn't even have to be hairdressing I mean, I've read a lot of books, right? And I, it always seems to lead back to the same sorts of things, is take opportunity when opportunity is there, right? This industry is full of opportunity, but it will, it will limit your opportunity if you keep closing doors around you. And I was saying this to you the other day, wasn't I? I mean, the thing about it is, if you sort of say, oh, I can't, I could if I would type of thing, or, you know, maybe, maybe not tonight. If, if opportunities arise and you want to take your career by storm, you need to open the door to taking every, you know, taking on opportunities like whether it be shoots or whether it be um, other educational things, ed, uh, other additional activities within within workplace. Mm -hmm. I think it's very very beneficial because experience comes then. Oh, the more experience you get, the better you become, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's quite straightforward that really, right? I mean, that's absolutely true, and that that uh, is is true in in our industry, in every industry, and in life. You know, we are enriched by the opportunities that we take hold of and participate in. Um, and if we want to grow and if we want to do more, then we have to do more. <laughs> That's just yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, there's a, there's a shift. You know, our industry in particular is a, is a young one. It is, and a and there's a you know there's a, a, a quite a shift in understanding and going from in, um, the the school and the educational world into the workforce yeah, yeah. and different rules apply and um you know I mean, it was interesting uh, bill gates i think he's, he's got his his 10 points about uh kind of what's fair in life and what's not but it, basically they, they, they operate on uh the understanding yeah. that the notion of fair and that you should get what you want because you're just great yeah. <laughs> gets a little bit smashed when you get out there in the real world and that's a harsh lesson for any of us to it is to, to learn but we we know that the opportunities are there and common sense tells us that if we take part in opportunities then we can harness those to our advantage and move ourselves from that place that we are at at the moment into the place where we want to be and that's a very simple uh, understanding of what is the simple process but that simple process requires a degree of dedication and commitment over time it does not just happen in a montage like the films you know <laughs> you got to be up there in front you know doing the heavy lifting every day yeah. and if you don't participate in that way if you don't have that constant commitment to moving your career along and creating your opportunities for yourself then you're the one that gets left behind and I, what I'd like to do is end that on a positive when you take those opportunities and you work hard with them 
maybe not that day, maybe not immediately, but consistent hard work pays. It just does. It does indeed, yeah. You know? Totally, totally agree with that. And it opens the door to loads of other opportunities uh-huh. in the future. Yeah. So Brian, Brian had a question there for us, actually. Mark so, Fogarty is asking both of you guys, have you changed how you teach over the years? Have we changed how we teach? Mark Fogarty, yeah. Mark Fogarty. Mark Doherty, yeah, Mark Doherty, from around the corner. Yeah. Very good. Thanks Hi, a lot, Mark. Mark. <laughs> um, I'll let John answer that question first, or do you want me to go first? Uh, I'm comfortable. It's your, it's your gig, baby. <laughs> right then. I mean, I, I, I've got to say, Mark, I mean, my opinion, yes, it has changed. It has evolved. Um, what, what we have done, and Davey Davey, is, I mean, we, we come from uh, a different background. My, my, myself and John come from the same background, which is Tony Gang, which was heavily um, induced with education. However, uh, education to me has evolved and we've had to move along with that. Um, we have rewritten a program in our, in our salon which is a little bit more in depth. So we've actually gone into the history of hair. Um, we've gone through 10 decades of history of hair. Um, we've gone through the, like, basically taken like a, an MVQ or a, an iTech or a, um, one of those institutions and actually rewritten it in, in our own form basically because it's, I, I think it's, it's a bit more easily read rather than it's very sort of academically written, I suppose. Um, we, we've written it in a little bit of an easier form. We've also brought, um, like, we've evolved our classic cuts. So classic cuts, to me, are the bedrock of hair, right? Mm-hmm. Without those, the, you know, the, the fundamentals of your hairdressing. So whether you choose, I mean, we've chosen 10 haircuts. Um, but again, we've evolved and we've made them a little bit more simplified so our, our team can go through them quicker. So again, it depends on salons, depends on the environment. If you need to fast track people through, you can choose the iconic haircuts that they need to learn and maybe teach the other things afterwards, in my opinion. But in regards to um, education, yeah, I mean, styles have changed. We've inherited as our classics, we've inherited the ombre, we've inherited the, the balayage, we've inver- um, invented different haircuts actually within within our range we've, we've taken on like a seamless haircut which is like a very sort of soft movable versatile haircuts so we've adapted our, our, our own education to be honest with you yeah I, mean, I think what about yourself John? Uh, I think it's been interesting to see the progress that has been made I, I, I guess you know in the last 20 years huge work has been done and there's really really fine approaches made by several you know industry heavy hitters that have some really great educational resources to draw upon mm-hmm. and huge work has been done around i guess getting kind of clear understanding of our uh, lexicon of technical terms so there's still huge variation within the industry on all those you know right, and, yeah, and, and various right. and we don't have an industry-wide standard there uh, so that uh, th- that has developed over time but i guess what i look at now is almost pairing that back somewhat and actually looking at communication in its true sense, and that's something that I've been very interested in over the last while, is looking at at what point do we actually create, uh, or at what point are we defeating the purpose? At what point are we over-complicating uh, the process with terminology? So one of the things that I would always clarify is I, I would look at the language that I use within a class in an educational environment and I would clarify when that uh, language is inappropriate for the salon floor because you know because sometimes it can just hamper what we do and we know also clients can look at it stuff online things. and it confuses things and clients mm. throw technical terms into the soup of a <laughs> of a I know a, a, a it's like what did you just say to me yeah like and, and, and it just honestly is, exactly so mm-hmm. clarity comes uh, through simplicity and I find that there are key elements and key points and I've worked really I guess looking at what the key elements and the key points are so it's simple factors around the essential information that I need to establish before I proceed uh, with the process with, with anyone uh, looking at the simplicity of those factors and the ease at which we can ask those questions and they can deliver a clear result with absolute clarity in order to ensure that everybody has the correct information to move forward. And sometimes that means stepping back from the absolute wealth of information and amazing progress and work that has been done over the last 20 years 
enough for the moment that I'm negating any of that because it's really useful and really worthwhile. But in the same way as we talked earlier about your brilliant idea here to have an editorial uh, control over the amount of information that we get, we need to make sure that we're simplifying the education that there, and the, the terminology that we're drawing from to ensure that we don't confuse things, but we actually enlighten and make the process more simple and more effective. Do you know what? I, I've got to say, though, I mean, what, what you're saying now, when, I, when we interview people and they come from different backgrounds, I always ask them, take me through your education. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's that kind of intriguing to know different section patterns, different terminology, what, where they've been taught. And, you know, they've, got, they've inherited a different sort of training as such. It would be nice if it was one, but I mean, I suppose that's what identifies, you know, people's training between different institutions or with different salons or whatever like that, so people can make the choice where they do go. But I do agree, I, 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 I can't stress this as much. I mean, if you're not doing education in your salon, I think you need to do education in your salon. I mean, I, even above hairdressing live, it needs to have some sort of, you know, um, like workshop environments. I mean, this, this is inspirational and you can take these and build a gallery and rewatch them and rewatch them again and take inspirational weekly, monthly. Um, but you still need to do um, the, you know, the, the workshop and get the practice in because the more practice you do, obviously the better you become. If I always say to my guys, if you did a hundred haircuts in one week, how good would you be rather mm-hmm. than do one haircut? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? You're going to be absolutely amazing. Well, remember that we, we, we have in our industry, the majority of our people uh, progress through an apprenticeship. And, and just remember what that word is, mm-hmm. okay? And it, it's a very old concept that applies to many different crafts and skills. It's a, it's a very powerful uh, method of learning and it's, it's separate from um, more formal um, practices around uh, lectures, it's, it's hands on. So rather than it being theoretical, it's practical. And the practical has served us very well. We're a practical industry and we do best when we bring the practical into our day to day learning environment. And you're so right. That idea that you know, the more you do, the better you get. That's just well, it. That's and that's that's it's quite simple. But repetition gives us learning, and away we go. It does indeed. We have another question. We have another question. Oh, another question. So, my the end, um, is the eagerness the same as when you first started? If you can remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that answers for you, John. Is it? The question for you. <laughs> the answer is for John. The question. <laughs> the dig was at you, Paul. The dig the was at me. You. Thank you very I much, know where you Mark. Live, Mark yeah, thank you very much. Um, I I think I mean Pete, you know we, we this comes up again um, in conversation. Although I I generally think people's concentration. Um, or the inspiration, or shall I say, the guidance from friends or f- siblings or, or, or anything. You got to choose who you take inspiration from, and the, the, the muses that you take inspiration from. I mean, I, I, I've always, I, I've got to work with you, John. Actually, um, so my, my my background was with very much like-minded people like myself about going into business, um, working our way through the ranks and becoming a, becoming a household name. You, 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 want, you wanted that, but I always worked and surrounded myself with those people. So I suppose you've always, I mean, every book I have ever read, self-help or, book, or you know, motivational books or whatever like that, they always say the same thing. Surround yourself with like-minded people. I mean, some people may not like what you do, but don't take inspiration from those. And I mean, if you really want to go get and, and, and get get through your life and go go you know head over heels into your career, then I think you've got to surround yourself with like-minded people because they're the people that are going to inspire you to continue on in your career. So I, I do believe in choosing your surroundings very carefully. Do you know? Mm. Um, I I guess just to pick up on, on on the part of the question about differentiating between uh, you know now and. You know, when I started, when everything was in black and white, <laughs> um, there is there is a passion that is unique to the hairdressing industry, which I just love. It, it and it, it it comes and meets us in many different forms in our day to day. I I love being able to spend an appointment time with somebody who's chilling out, and I get to make them feel better in that instant. 
that is immediately rewarding, really worthwhile, and if we lose sight of that, then we're really missing a trick, which is sad. But what I will say is the wonder that is the energy, the vibrancy, and the uh, potential of youth is in no way less than it was when I started out. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it is it is different, and it is uh, there are different challenges and different opportunities there, and things are not the same. But that core drive, that core enthusiasm, that core, oh my God, I did that! Wow, but yeah, look what I learned yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. You know that that is really uh, present in in the environment that we create when it's educational and on our you know on our shop floors where we're doing it right and everything's going well. That joie de vivre, that is, you know, somebody progressing and learning something new and feeling better because they have managed to, 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 to achieve something. Like, that's amazing. And that's all around us every day. And it's why I love this industry. And it's why 30 years later, I'm still part of it. Yeah. Same as myself, actually. I hope that answers your question, Mark, actually. But, um, I mean, look, I, the, the, what, I, just to reiterate what you just said there, it's because of the opportunity for myself that, I just, I mean, it's endless, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's endless for everybody out there, do you know? It's just how, how to grab a hold of that and run with it, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's all about, um, like, you, you, you have to just go out there and do it. I mean, it's about, uh, what, what, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, actually? I forget the word I'm looking for. But um, it's, uh, it's about going through the process. You have to go through the process. And that's what, a lot, lot of people don't want to go through the process. and don't see light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what it is about, you know what I mean? It's about going through the process. It's a physically demanding job. I mean, you know, there's, yeah, inspiration. It's easy for two old hacks like us to sit here and talk, <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. Because that's a distant memory, that, mm. that like 12 hour day, you Speak know, and yourself, like sore, <laughs> <laughs> sore hands and like sore back and you know, all of that. Mm. Uh, and that's, you know, it's a long, grueling, physically tiring uh, day. And, and to find inspiration on the back of that can, can, can be hard. Uh, but the commitment that is, uh, the reward comes from the commitment. Yeah. So, you know, th that commitment that we make over time pays a dividend. And that's it. Hard work and commitment gets you a reward. That's Absolutely. just it. It's as simple as that. Not in a montage, not fast forwarded not edited, just <laughs> simply getting through it, being consistent like and this. being the person that you can, that, that, you know, that can be relied upon, you know, and then you, you end up relying upon yourself. Very good. So listen, I hope that was um, helpful to all of you out there. Um, look, we're going to be covering more topics again in the future. And please message in if there's things that you did want us to cover and we can get people in. I mean, hopefully John will come back and actually do a masterclass with us. We've been trying to get, uh, get, get John to do one of these classes. So would I you come be, back? I w if you will have me, I would be more than delighted. So he's, he's just said Thank that there now. So <laughs> you've got to hold him to that. So we, we're going to get him on and maybe do a masterclass in the future. But listen, guys, we're going to be back in two weeks' time. Um, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done that way. Two weeks' time. <laughs> um, we got Joseph Koniak. Um, he's going to come on board and do like a bridal editorial look. He's a he's an upstyling. He's like he does masterpieces. He does. He's absolutely incredible. He does a lot of fashion weeks. He does um, backstage hair and loads of different shows. He does a lot of bridal stuff. So he is one to watch as well. Oh, yeah, so he's. So He's, he's going to be back right. in two weeks. Right, so I hope that was topical for you. Um, and I hope you've learned something by that. So listen, you go get them and take advantage of your career because there's so much opportunity out there, guys. So we'll see you all again soon. Very good. Great.